Well, good evening and welcome to our midweek study. We're at uh, about the halfway point of our master class series. We're studying the Sermon on the Mount Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. You can join us on campus or online. And then on Wednesday nights, we're just taking one verse from the Beatitudes each week. And we're, uh, we're, we're digging in and we're using this video that you're listening to right now. If you're new, we're using these video lessons as basically the curriculum for our small groups and discipleship groups that are meeting throughout the city, some on campus, some in people's homes, some over Zoom meetings or over the phone, some one-on-one, -on -one, some in big groups. And uh, so we're just glad that you're with us tonight as we've, uh, we've come to pretty much the halfway point uh, in our study. And tonight we're going to look at an incredible verse of Scripture. In fact, if you have your Bible, just look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Now I'm skipping ahead a, a verse or two from where we were last week. We're not necessarily going to do these Beatitudes in, in uh, chronological order. But we're going to skip ahead to verse 8 and listen to what it says. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Let's bow our hearts together and pray uh, as we dig into this passage. Father, tonight... Uh, we thank you for this truth. And Lord, we pray that tonight you would open our eyes and our minds and our hearts. And this week in our groups as we share and, and uh, we're open with one another. But Lord, you'd teach us how to be open and how to be honest. Lord, to be willing to take a, a personal, spiritual, and moral inventory of our lives. And we thank you for the promises that you've given us in Scripture. That whatever we will uncover you, in your mercy and grace, will cover. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you would give us eyes to see tonight. And thank you that the pure in heart will see God. And that's what we want. God, tonight, that we would see you and focus and get a glimpse of who you really are in all your goodness and all your glory. In Christ's name, amen. What does it mean to be pure in heart? God says there's this blessing that we have, if we're pure in heart, that is, in a practical sense, if we're willing to openly examine and confess our faults, both to God, to myself, and to someone I trust, uh, that we're going to experience this, this blessing of being pure in heart. Openly examine and confess my faults to myself, to God, and to someone I trust. Now, when we talk about being open about our faults, being willing to confess our sins, being willing even to confess our sins to one another and pray for one another that we may be healed. Let me just say quickly at the beginning, you know, you shouldn't share your faults with everyone. And you shouldn't share your faults with just anyone. But you should share your, your faults with someone, someone you trust someone that loves God and loves you and has no agenda other than whatever's best for you. And the scripture says that we need to, to be pure in heart and to see God for who he is. We've got to be willing to openly examine and confess our faults to ourselves, to God, and ultimately to someone that we trust. Now, this is interesting because you know there's an, a, a, a strange chapter in the Bible. If you read in the Old Testament book of Leviticus, chapter 14. There's a whole chapter in the Bible that, that is, uh, you know, curiously, interestingly dedicated to people doing house cleaning, cleaning out their homes. And that if a home was found to have mildew or mold, they would actually, God told the, the, the Israelites how to deal with cleaning out your closets and underneath your rugs and, and especially the issue of mildew and mold, which is interesting because that would cause what we know today in the modern world as sick building syndrome. God didn't want the Israelites to have sick building syndrome in their homes. He didn't want them getting colds and sickness and sinus problems. He wanted them to clean out. And of course, he was making a deeper, he was showing a deeper purpose by showing how, uh, as the great Supreme Court Justice Louis Brandeis famously said, uh, publicity is uh, justly commended as a remedy for social and industrial diseases. Think about that. He's saying when there's problems in society, he said the best solution is just publicity. 
transparency, letting everybody know. In Florida, we call them sunshine laws, where the government has to tell us and show us what they're doing with our money. Here's what Justice Brandeis said. He said, natural sunlight is the best of disinfectants. Natural sunlight's the greatest natural antiseptic in the world. And he said, electric lights are the most efficient policemen. What he was saying was so many times we get into trouble when we're doing things behind closed doors, when we're in the closet, in the corners, in the dark, and we're, we're making decisions and doing things that we would never do and say in the light of day. Brandeis said, natural sunlight is a great disinfectant. And that's found in, in Leviticus 14 when God told the Israelites to clean house. And what we're going to look at tonight is the fact that sometimes we need to do some spiritual house cleaning. We need to openly uh, examine and confess our faults and be honest and clean, clean house and uh, confess to ourselves, to God, and to someone we trust. You remember in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us of all sin. He said, if you walk in the light, that's the secret to fellowship, fellowship with others, fellowship with God. In other words, being open and honest and being too willing to admit our faults. Now, I want you to think about this phrase, blessed are the pure in heart. To have a pure heart, friends, it doesn't mean that you don't have faults. In fact, it means the exact opposite. To be pure in heart doesn't mean that your heart is so pure, you don't have any sin, you don't have any fault. What it means is that the pure in heart see God for who he is, and, and, and they're willing to openly examine and confess their faults to themselves, to God, and to others. In other words, they're willing to confess. They're willing to repent. They're willing, friend, the first step to dealing with sin is simply to acknowledge our sin. And so I want you to think about this tonight. The basis for a pure heart is not how good you are, but it's how good God is. The basis for being pure in heart doesn't mean that I'm perfect. It means that God is holy. It means that God is good. It means that God loves me, that God has a plan and a purpose, and I'm focused on who he is and how he's willing to, to forgive me. He's willing to transform me. He's willing to fill me and change me, make me and mold me the person that he wants me to be. You see, the basis for a pure heart is not how good we are. It's how good God is. And when the Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God, one of the ways to be pure in heart is, first of all, to see God, to remember God's kindness. Remember in Romans 2, verse 4, it says God's kindness. It is the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. You know, as a parent or in a business, you can motivate people with guilt or fear or anger. You can control a child's behavior with, with raising your voice and slamming doors and pointing fingers. You can control people with fear and anger for a short period of time. In other words, it's temporal. You got to be standing right over their shoulder. But what happens to kids when they're raised in a harsh, strict environment where there's uh, rules without relationship? Kids that are motivated by fear and guilt, when they get away from home, when they get away from that supervision, they often rebel. Rules without relationship always lead to rebellion. But how do you motivate people and how do you impact people in the home, in, the, in, in your workplace, in the church? How does God motivate us to change? He does it with love. The Bible said it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. So to see God and to, and to be pure in heart means I'm going to focus, I'm going to remember God's kindness. Romans 8, 1 says, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And Romans 5, 8 says, God demonstrates his love in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So we remember God's kindness. Secondly, you need to remember God's faithfulness. You know, it was Hebrews 13, 5 that says, God says, I will never leave you I will never forsake you. Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. Paul says, I'm convinced 
neither death nor life, angels nor demons, the present nor the future, nor any powers, height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The blessed are the pure in heart, they will see God. We are, our purity of heart is not based on how good we are. It's based on how good God is. It's remembering his kindness, his love, his mercy. It's remembering his faithfulness that he said, uh, I'm convinced of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you, he will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. And then finally, we remember God's promises. 1 John 1.9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. And he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, I will give you a new heart. I'll put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. The Bible says that God does open heart surgery on us. And one of the ways he does that for the pure in heart, for those that will see God, is that he allows us to do some spiritual house cleaning where we openly examine and confess my faults to myself, to God, and to others. And finally, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, verse 20, is one of my favorite verses. Listen to what it says. This is in the New International Version. It says, no matter how many promises God has made, they are all yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Every promise God has made, the the kindness of God, the faithfulness of God, the promise of God, the love, the forgiveness, the mercy of God is available to us. And every promise of God is yes. It's answered. It's solved. It's proved. It's demonstrated in Christ. And then we answer, amen. Um, I want to encourage you in your groups this week, as you think about some of these questions and some of these issues, to focus not on how good you are, but how good God is. Because Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, they will see God. I look forward to seeing you either online or on campus this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Don't forget, you can support and give to the ministry of Grace Point Church and help change the world one life at a time by going to gracepoint.net and click on the word giving or the word donate and, uh, and, and be a part of of uh, generous giving here at Grace Point. We look forward to this Sunday morning, and uh, we're going to be back in the Sermon on the Mount, and we're going to be talking about how you can enjoy and experience the good life by living a kingdom-first life. I look forward to seeing you then. God bless you.